the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, get up and head south on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert route. So he got up and set out. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, that is the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury, who had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. <clears throat> Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. 
the spirit said to Philip, go and join up with that chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone instructs me? So he invited Philip to get in and, sat with, and sit with him. This was the scripture passage he was reading. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will tell of his posterity? For his life is taken from the earth. Then the eunuch said to Philip in reply, I beg you, about whom is the prophet saying this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture passage, he proclaimed Jesus to him. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, there is water. What is to prevent my being baptized? Then he ordered the chariot to stop, and Philip and the eunuch both went down into the water, and he baptized him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, but continued on his way rejoicing. Philip came to Azotus and went about proclaiming the good news to all the towns until he reached Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Sing 
sing psalms to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Praise us, shout before the King, the Lord. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. A reading from the letter to the, of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, over all these things put on love, that is, the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body, and be thankful. And whatever you do in word or in deed, do everything in the name of of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Whatever you do, do from the heart, as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that you will receive from the Lord the due payment of the inheritance, be slaves of the Lord Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Each year, Jesus's parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to festival custom. After they had completed its days and they were returning, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem. 
but his parents did not know it. Thinking that he was in the caravan, they journeyed for a day and looked for him among their relatives and acquaintances, but not finding him, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. And he said to them, why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. He went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Let those to be ordained deacons come forward. Benjamin Joseph Dagger. Present. Nicholas James Freitas. Present. Christopher Ames Wheeler. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the diaconate. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the diaconate. Thanks be to God. My sisters and brothers, welcome to St. Mark Chapel for the ordination of deacons, for the service to the people of God in this local church of Erie. This celebration occurs on the memorial of St. Joseph the Worker in the year of St. Joseph, and with it, a worldwide pandemic. 
for Benjamin, Nicholas, and Christopher. This, I'm sure, will be a memorable day. To the parents and families of our candidates, thank you. Thank you for your commitment to your faith, your example, and the gifts of your son to the church. To the parishes, seminarians, and individuals who have touched the lives of Ben, Nick, and Chris from their home parishes of St. Mary in St. Mary's, Blessed Sacrament in Erie, and St. Lawrence in Albion. To St. Mary's Seminary in Baltimore, and St. Vincent Seminary in Latrobe, represented by Father Edward Masich, Rector, and Father John Mary Tompkins, Vice Rector. And to all the priests, deacons, religious seminarians, and faithful, who through your example and concern for Ben, Nick, and Chris, have helped to prepare them for ministry in the church. Please know how grateful we are, we all are, for your care and dedication. On this memorial of St. Joseph the Worker, Pope Francis in the Apostolic Letter, Patris Corde, reminds us that from St. Joseph, Jesus learned the value, the dignity, and the joy of what it means to eat bread that is the fruit of one's own labor. It was Joseph with Mary who created a community of faith for Jesus that prepared him for his ministry. It should be obvious that our call to ministry doesn't just happen. It is born from communities of faith in and through which God is present. Sadly, the presence of many members of the faith communities who have nurtured these men in their journey and lives and helped to bring them to this moment today is diminished because of the pandemic in which we continue to find ourselves. Yet this moment in our lives and theirs, for as sobering as it may be, is also a moment of grace. Jesus articulates the nature of the calling to serve in Matthew's gospel when he says, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This admonition is perhaps the greatest challenge of the gospel, calling us not to accept business as usual, not to accept injustice and estrangement as the way things are, not to justify flexible morals and ethics with the mantra that everyone does it. In short, to be authentic disciples of Jesus means to put ourselves in the humble, demanding role of servant to others and to intentionally seek the happiness and fulfillment of those we love, regardless of the cost to ourselves. So, if you want your ministry as deacons to be fruitful, you must root yourselves in Jesus's love and life. The discipline of prayer, obedience and celibacy that you are called to embrace this day are meant to enable you to grow in the same spirit of service and mercy that so characterized Jesus's ministry. These disciplines are not obstacles, hurdles, or distractions that are somehow detracted from what it means to be an ordained minister of the church. 
They are not meant to set you up for being better or greater than others. Here, there is little room for pride, selfishness, and arrogance. Rather, they are the vehicles that will carry you to deeper union with Jesus. As Pope Francis has often reminded the bishops, priests, and deacons of our church, you must cultivate in your heart the virtues of courage, humility, and generosity, and surrender yourself to Jesus Christ and his body, the church, in order to serve as authentic and effective ministers for the sake of those entrusted to your pastoral care. <clears throat> ben, Nick, and Chris, your service to the people of God as deacons is a threefold ministry. Service to the word of God, service at the Lord's altar, and service to the poor. As deacons, you will proclaim the gospel, preach homilies, convey the needs of the people of God in the general intercessions, and offer many other forms of instructions. You are to be the agents of the new evangelization and proclaim Christ to the world. Yet, in receiving the gospel of Christ, remember that it is the truth of the message of Jesus Christ that you proclaim, not yourselves. As deacons, you will also serve at the altar of the Lord, preparing it for the banquet of Christ's sacrifice, distributing Holy Communion, to the faithful, as well as to the sick and the homebound. You will baptize, preside at weddings and funerals and other prayer services. Be good servants of the church's sacramental life and always point to Jesus, not yourselves, as our life and our hope. Finally, as deacons, you are called to be the living and working expression of the charity of the church. To you then is entrusted in a special way the ministry of charity that is at the very origin of diaconal ministry. As Pope Francis has reminded us, you are to go to the margins of our world where you will find the poor and the broken. Be generous in your service, imitating the Lord who washed the feet of his apostles at the Last Supper. And so, with great joy, Ben, Nick, and Chris, the Diocese of Erie calls you forth for the sacrament of holy orders. While you have been given gifts and talents, we pray that you will always rely upon the grace of God to fulfill whatever may be lacking in you to carry out fully the ministry entrusted to you this day. I now ask that you proclaim your intentions before the people of God and trust that God, who has begun this good work in you, will bring it to fulfillment. Dear sons, before you enter the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve to be consecrated for the church's ministry by the laying on of hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity 
in order to assist the priestly order and benefit the Christian people? Do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience as the apostles urge and to proclaim this faith in a world in word and deed according to the gospel and the church's tradition. Those of you who are prepared to embrace the celibate life, do you resolve to keep forever this commitment as a sign of your dedication to Christ the Lord for the sake of the kingdom of heaven in the service of God and man? Do you resolve to maintain and deepen the spirit of prayer that is proper to your way of life and in keeping with the spirit and what is required of you to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God and indeed for the whole world? Do you resolve to conform your way of life always to the example of Christ, of whose body and blood you are ministers at the altar. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will mercifully pour out the grace of his blessing on these his servants, whom in his kindness he raises to the holy order of the diaconate. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Michael, pray for us. Holy angels of God, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul, Pray for us, Saint Andrew, pray for us, 
St. John, pray for us. St. Mary Magdalene, pray for us. St. Stephen, pray for us. St. Ignatius of Antioch, pray for us. St. Lawrence, pray for us. St. Perpetua and St. Felicity, pray for us. St. Agnes, pray for us. St. Gregory, pray for us. St. Augustine, pray for us. St. Athanasius, pray for us. St. Basil, pray for us. St. Martin, pray for us. St. Benedict, pray for us. St. Francis and St. Dominic, pray for us. St. Francis Xavier, pray for us. St. John Vianney, pray for us. St. Catherine of Siena, pray for us. St. Teresa of Jesus, pray for us. O holy men and women, saints of God, pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From all evil, Lord, deliver us, we pray. From every sin, Lord, deliver us, we pray. From everlasting death, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection, by the upbringing of the Holy Spirit, Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Govern and protect your holy church, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless these chosen men. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify these chosen men. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless, sanctify, and consecrate these holy men. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ graciously hear us. Lord God, mercifully hear our prayers and graciously accompany with your help what we undertake by virtue of our office. Sanctify by your blessing these men we present. For in our judgment, we believe them worthy to exercise sacred ministry through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Draw near, we pray, Almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportions every order and assign every office, who remain unchanged, but make all things new. In your eternal providence, you make provisions for every age as you order all creation through him who is your word, your power and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord. You grant that the church, his body, adorned with manifold heavenly graces, draw together in the diversity of its members and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit should grow and spread forth to build up a new temple. And once you chose the sons of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, so now you establish three ranks of ministers in the sacred offices to serve in your name. And so, in the first days of your church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your son's apostles appointed seven men of good repute to assist them in the daily ministry, that they may devote themselves more fully to prayer and preaching of the word. By prayer and laying on of hands, they entrusted these chosen men the ministry of serving at table. We beseech you, Lord, look with favor on these your servants who will minister at your holy altar and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Send forth upon them, Lord, we pray, the Holy Spirit, that they may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace for the fulfilling, faithful carrying out of the work of the ministry. May there abound in them every gospel virtue, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your commandments shine forth in their conduct so that by the example of their way of life, they may inspire the imitation of your holy people in offering the witness of a clear conscience. May they remain strong and steadfast in Christ so that by imitating on earth your son, who came not to be served, but to serve, they may be found worthy to reign in heaven with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have been taught. Believe what you believe and practice what you believe. <clears throat> 
Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hand. O oh God, font of all mercy, look upon our offerings, which we bring before your majesty in commemoration of St. Joseph, and mercifully grant that the gifts we offer may become the means of protection for those who call upon you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and on the commemoration of St. Joseph, to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God and was sent, set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over your only begotten son who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, the angels praise your majesty Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Oh, oh, oh. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. <clears throat> Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving, th giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Mark, St. Patrick, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, with the order of Bishop, with the order of Bishops, these your servants who have been ordained today as ministers for the church, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. 
In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Thank you. 
I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger, and who believe in me shall not thirst. No one can come to me unless the Father beckons, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up on the last day. The bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And if you eat of this bread, you shall live forever. You shall live forever. And I will raise you up. And I will raise you up. And I will raise you up. of the Lord of men and drink of his blood and drink of his blood you shall not have life within you and I will raise you up and I will
Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that by St. Joseph's example, cherishing in our hearts the signs of your love, we may ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who has called you to the service of others in his church, give you great zeal for all, especially the afflicted and the poor. Amen. May he who has entrusted you with preaching the gospel of Christ help you as you live according to the, his word to be its sincere and fervent witnesses. Amen. May he who has appointed you stewards of his mysteries make you imitators of his Son, Jesus Christ, and ministers of unity and peace in the world. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thank you. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
Thank you.